responded to by his lawyer. Show me evidence where he, he, where he attended the invitation that was handed to him by EFCC. And EFCC is just suddenly quiet. We don't know what's happening. Maybe EFCC is also part of the, part of the, 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 the whatever, whatever uh, gimmick is going on behind. And you don't have to say that those of us don't know. What do you know, National Assembly? That a journalist of about 25 years standing, I'm a journalist at the highest level, I practice at the highest level, the Guardian newspapers, at the highest level of journalism. I covered the course for seven years. So you don't just say those of us who don't have locals. What do you mean by uh, those who don't have locals? Have you read their constitution? Who owns the sovereignty of Nigeria? The people of Nigeria are own you, the sovereignty are, are you, of Nigeria. Are you, are you, are you going to then cast secondly, a vote? Wait, are you going is, to cast a vote? What is the that implication? Day? What is the import? It doesn't matter whether I'm going to it vote matters. or not. It doesn't matter. Will Mr. Tinibu vote on that day? So what are you talking about? I am just like Mr. Tinibu. Has Tinibu forced anybody to he vote? Has, for? He has. Tomorrow is the 12th day of June. 2023, a day set aside by the former President Mamadou Buhari um, to replace um, the normal democracy day known um, by Nigerians. Yes, 12th of June, which was the day to commemorate the death of um, MQ Abiola, has been slated as Democracy Day, which um, is going to be commemorated and remembered tomorrow by Nigerians. Hence, the public holiday that has been announced. Okay, so uh, the big question is, is the country being governed according to the democratic systems as some... Um, as mentioned in the constitution of course nigeria is a federating unit and a democratic system uh, that or a, a country to be governed according to a democratic system of government but is it going as planned are we exercising democracy in nigeria these answers are glaring um, you and i know the answers already my name is angelo welcome to nation's very tower here with more updates now first of all on the issue of um the build up to the national assembly i have something different for you um now this um happened in the studios of tunnels news and it was sort of a heated argument okay yes first of all huriwa's national coordinator emmanuel Ongbiko, has opined that president asiwajibola ahmed tinubu seems to be imposing leaders on the national assembly given his recent actions and body language According to Emmanuel, the Senate House and the House of Representatives should be allowed to elect their leaders without any form of interference from a foreign body or from any external factor. Emmanuel Omubiko stressed that it is only constitutionally right for the senators to be allowed to choose their leaders without any further interference, especially from the presidency, just like Asiwaju did by pointing out to um, the Senate House that um, Gosu Lakbabio should be his preferred candidate as well as Tajulin Abbas for the House of Reps. Let me allow you watch a cut away from the interview on Channel News. It was a heated argument between um, Horiwa's national coordinator and another senator. Well, without wasting much of your time, watch this clip. He said Abadou was invited and he presented himself and clarified issues. That was the first time he was invited when he was a governor. As Minister of Niger Delta, and the invitation that was extended to him by EFCC was only responded to by his lawyer. Show me evidence where he, he, where he attended the invitation that was handed to him by EFCC. And EFCC is just suddenly quiet. We don't know what's happening. Maybe EFCC is also part of the, part of the, 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 the whatever, whatever uh, gimmick is going on behind. And you don't have to say that those of us don't know. What do you know, National Assembly, that a journalist of about 25 years standing, I'm a journalist at the highest level, I practice at the highest level, the Guardian newspapers, at the highest level of journalism. I covered the course for seven years. So you don't just say those of us who don't have locals. What do you mean by uh, those who don't have locals? Have you read their constitution? Who owns the sovereignty of Nigeria? The people of Nigeria are who you, own the sovereignty are, are you, of Nigeria. Are you, are you, are you going to then cast secondly, a vote? Wait, are you going to is, cast a vote? What is the that implication? Day? What is the import? It doesn't matter whether I'm going to it vote matters. or not. It doesn't matter. Will Mr. Tinibu vote on that day? So what are you talking about? I am just like Mr. Tinibu. Has Tinibu forced anybody to he vote? Has, for? He has. He has been saying when? it. He has been. He, he told you. He, he been told you. It. He's been. He's been in the media. The lot of Please, uh, can I, you tell Nigerians? What section will, 50 will, A and B says? Justin, just for a moment. Section 50 just for a moment. A, we don't have just to read that. Um, just for a moment. Just, no, just for a moment. No. Just, APC is a majority, but it has a very small majority, just 57 or so. And the other parties have, have like 50. So, or 50 something. Uh, what Nigerians expect? 50, 59. Yes. So, is that a majority? The way you're talking, like we the are nine the majority. Session. If you say the nine session, APC was the clear majority, I will say, okay. But now they're not the clear majority. They have to work with the minority, uh, the smaller, smaller parties. To even 
to even produce a SNAP president, which other smaller parties have, a, have, a, uh, have acceded to. Yeah. So what Nigerians expect is for them to abide by Section 50A and B of the Constitution, which says a president and deputy president of the Senate who shall be elected by the members of that house from among themselves and the speaker and the deputy speaker of the House of Representatives who shall be elected by the members of that house from among themselves. Let every senator that will be sworn in on that day, let every member of the Federal House of Representatives, it doesn't matter whether you're a Muslim, we don't even want to talk about the Muslim Muslim ticket that the APC has, has forced Nigerians to accept. So whether it's a Muslim, whether it's an animist, whether it's an atheist, whether it's anybody, whether it's Igbo, Hausa, Fulani, everybody should be allowed to right. show up and contest. Thank you so much, Mr. Yes, um, yes, that was um, that update there. Well, um, this particular man, Emmanuel Omubiko, is a very outspoken person, fearlessly outspoken. So, um, well, I would not say, I would not write him off. He's not a senator, neither is he, is he a legislator or a legislative officer with the National Assembly. But he's actually saying the truth because um, from analysis, um, APC or the All Progressive Congress constitute the majority party in the Senate um, with over 59 senators, okay? Labour Party has like um, eight or thereabouts and then um, PDP has like um, maybe 30 something or so and um, SDP one, you know, NNPP two and so on and so forth. But um, outrightly, APC is the majority party in the Senate. So um, as well as since there are other minority parties that are in contention for the seat of the presidency of the Senate, this should be a collective election and an agreement because um, I feel no leader for any National Assembly or any of the houses or the parliamentary houses should be imposed on these um, legislative officers because um, they have the right, especially as regards to their constitution, to be allowed to select a leader for themselves, okay? Yes, so that um, this particular leader is not supposed to be always in conformation with um, whatever the government or the federal government is saying or the presidency is saying. We saw it during the each assembly where um, the former Senate President Abubakar Bukola Saraki, when he was always in loggerheads with the presidency over issues and over decisions to be made, that was an example of an opposition um, house or an opposition presidency of the Senate. So we should see something of that because Nigeria needs sort of opposition and resistance from different um, parliamentary houses for the country to be moved forward in all ramifications. Yes, um, that is that on the ongoing um, presidential elections petitions tribunal at the Court of Appeal. I told you yesterday that there were no video footages left or made available. But today we have um, something for you. Updates from the ongoing presidential elections petition at the Court of Appeal have emerged and video footages have been made available. An overview of the court proceedings held by the Labour Party or held that the Labour Party and its counsel led by Dr. Jibrin Okutepa, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, quizzed the counsel to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, which was overruled by the tribunal, okay? Now, this particular question was supposed to be thrown to the council of INEC, but it was um, overruled and um, the Labour Party's council was asked to go back and um, sort of rephrase the question. Yes, um, well, Jibril Okutekpa, who is a genius in what he does, said that there are many ways to catch a rat. So they will still rephrase those questions and ask them to INEC accordingly. So to hear more of this, Jibril Okutekpa, who headed the proceedings in court yesterday, addressed the press post court proceedings. Remember that the um, day before yesterday, the press were not addressed by the Council of the Labour Party due to the fact that they thought or the Council felt there was nothing to say to the press. Let me allow you to listen and watch um, the Council to the Labour Party and Peter will be addressed pressmen after court proceedings yesterday. Uh, thank you. Yesterday we didn't talk to you because there was no need. Well, the ruling is not as devastating as we may be thinking of. It was just a request to put one or two questions to INEC. And in the wisdom of their lordships, they say the application ought to have been filed earlier. And so because it was not filed earlier, uh, the, the characteristically as uh, Judas should do, they struck it out. So there is no devastating consequences, as you may be thinking of, because there are many ways to kill the rat. And then we will um, we have other ways to invite INEC to come and answer the questions. So they are, we will do it. 
I will discuss with our clients, but what is the necessity for it? Well, there are many ways to go to Lagos. So to be specific, sir, what are these questions and who are these? No, 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 we won't argue and tell you what those questions are. We have, uh, the, we wanted to put certain questions to INEC and we didn't file the application within time. With regards to ICT experts? With, with regards to the, 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 uh, the purported um, uh, technical glitch, <clears throat> how it affects only presidential and did not affect National Assembly. But that's beside the point. I, I was thinking that you were going to be interested in the video that were played. That was simple. That is the last <laughs> <question. laughs> So tell us about the video. Well, you, 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 you were in court, you saw it. Um, our case is that um, the election, the promises that INEC made to Nigerians through its national chairman and other principal officers of the commission, those promises, as you saw in those videos, were not kept. And I was particularly, uh, you saw there that um, a, a prominent national commissioner say that they were all not happy. You saw that. So that's all that we wanted Nigerians to see. Contrary to what uh, the petition is here, that transmission of results is not real time. Uh, there's no need for it, electronically transmitted results and so on and so forth. That's all that we just brought for the allowship to take a judicial look at it, devoid of any other thing. The other one was the date of nomination uh, from the video from the candidates of the APC himself, you discover that he said in his word that he went to inform Mr. President of the choice of his running mate, and that was on the 10th of July 2022. So we just brought it for the court to make up his mind, together with other exhibits we are going to produce to show what our contentions are. That's all that we have done. And the law allows us to play those videos. We you know that uh, documents don't lie. Human beings can lie, but documents cannot. Would there be other videos apart from this one? More will come. And you will see it. <coughs> Thank you very much. So I'm sure that uh, the admission to technical glitches and the rest of them, you are your best judge. You can judge it. Okay, um, the ongoing petition at the Court of Appeal is heated. Okay, lots of evidences have been brought on board. I've brought you updates on how the PDP, the People's Democratic Party, have availed up to 16 um, physical and human evidences, uh, some of which were um, ad hoc staff with the Commission. And then um, we've also seen that um, yesterday the Labour Party availed um, two reporters from Arise News who came with flash drives that were played in court through the help of a media device in the, uh, in the form of a 52-inch uh, um, plasma projector, uh, two of them do. So, things are getting heated, okay? I guess the APC is becoming so fretful, the INEC or the Commission is becoming so fretful of the way the Commission or the way the petition is going on, okay? That should be what we would see in the coming days, all right? The court has been adjourned to further notice, uh, which is supposed to be on um, Tuesday. So we'll see what happens on Tuesday. Yes, um, next, still on the build-up to the presidency of the Senate and the National Assembly, um, the People's Democratic Party have cautioned against any form of intimidation as the 10th National Assembly elect its principal officers on June 13th, 2023, which is supposed to be a few days from now. National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Debo, Ologunaba made a position or made the position of the party known at the news or, or as at a press conference, okay, which was availed to yesterday. Now he spoke and opined that members of the National Assembly should be allowed to elect their leaders freely. Now he exposed that information at their disposal or at the disposal of the PDP pointed out attempts to harass and threaten lawmakers elect as to their own choices of leaders of the National Assembly and Senate respectively he therefore called for a sort of autonomy amongst the new legislators elects and um 
the already existing ones alike okay he however sounded different notes of warning to the opposition okay these are many more in this video clip when i come back watch this clip it is clear that the more be emphasized that a critical ingredient for concerned democracy is independence of the legislation and of course the principle of separation of powers as i indicated at the last briefing the legislature remains the symbol of democracy in the constitutional democracy. In the sense that people's house. That's where people are elected from all the constituents in the country as a component part of the country to speak for their people. Since our last briefing, the feelers we're getting from the public domain is the fact that some elements within the APC have become jittery and they continue to show and plot to ensure that they influence the leadership of the National Assembly. Information at our disposal, which of course are verifiable, some of which we got even from your own reporting. The attempt by some APC elements to intimidate and to harass and threaten lawmakers elect with a view to influencing the outcome of the election on Tuesday, 13th June, on the floor of both houses as to who emerges the leader in terms of the speaker and the president of the House of Representatives and the Senate, respectively. Reports from the Public Space Syndicate of plots in terms of the harassment, in terms of actually to arrest some people, those people who are considered to be strong proponents for the independence of the the legislature, and who are in the forefront on the need to respect those standing rules that provides that member-elect should elect their own leadership without any external influence. So we have these reported actions and plots to arrest such individuals right um yes you've seen through updates now that are pointing at the fact that there is an alleged ploy to impose a sort of um hierarchy on people or on legislators in the national assembly and the senators in the house of senate i would urge the apc not to do this please let us put aside zoning okay the zoning system would not or may not work let the um members of these houses gather up or come together and elect their members or their hierarchy or their presidents and vice presidents respectively or speakers and deputy speakers respectively this is the best thing to, this is democratic system all who come to a public office that is supposed to be um that's supposed to be ascertained or that's supposed to be legitimized by election should be given the room okay for the electoral process to take place freely please we shouldn't impose any sort of leadership on the national assembly these two houses or parliamentary bodies are um, the baselines for the enactment of law and order okay in the country and um, as such shouldn't be uh, their presidency or their hierarchy or their 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 own um sort of executive council shouldn't be uh, doctored okay so i urge the apc and its governing body and national working committee and national executive committee to please allow the members of these houses of parliaments to elect their members or their hierarchy themselves that is the right thing to do finally on the issue of wealth subsidy removal and solutions to it senator she Husani, a pan-africanist and then a human rights Crusader has granted an interview on issues bordering the country and the polity, where he reiterated that um, Nigerians live a life of self-deception and falsehood. He further opined that Nigeria can grow to be like the developed nations such as Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, and then South Korea, and so on. Okay, He spoke uh, of Nigeria's possession of national wealth, which he called Gulf money. Okay, He, however, 
um, held that lots of rich and comfortable people in Nigeria or in the country have been discovered to have poor relatives and um, poor um, people living around them which shows and depicts that Nigeria is living a life of self-deception and falsehood. Details are more in this particular caption. When I get back, we'll talk on this video. Watch it. I cannot recall how many number of protests are participating in support of petroleum subsidy. But the question we fail to ask ourselves for all these years is can't we do without subsidy? Can't we do without billions of taxpayers' money being paid to anonymous persons in name of subsidy? Can't we rescue our economy? Can't we do things differently? Um, many governments in the past have tried, but they have failed. And they failed because of the fear of the social implication of such withdrawal and also the fear of mass uprising and resistance that will come after such withdrawal. And it has happened. I have been a strong advocate of subsidy. But now, we need to tell ourselves the truth as a country. This subsidy started in millions, then in billions and hundreds of billions, and now it has, heated, it has hit billion, trillions. And we have reached a point where we were told that the government even have to borrow to pay subsidy. And this is not something that is going to come to an end in the next 1, 2, 10, or 20 years. It appears that we have to continue to source for money to pay subsidy. Can't we build other ideas in such a way that we will get down prices to the level of the ordinary man and then end this subsidy regime? When I ask question, who are the beneficiaries of these subsidies, they tell us, oil marketers. Don't oil marketers, don't they have names? We need to know who are their names. I've never seen somebody who has come to the national television or been online and say, my name is Musa James Adeleke O Onoha, and that I am the beneficiary of this subsidy. So we can't continue to pay money to anonymous frosters, rent seekers, middlemen in the oil industry who have been benefiting and using the, the, the resistance of civil society to, 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 to support for this subsidy uh, for their own personal ends. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, our oil should be a blessing to Nigeria. It should be a benefit to our people. It should be one that will support life and also help our people. We look at the amount of money that is paid to subsidy. Can this money be invested in health, in education, in infrastructure, something physically people can see? Borrowing to pay subsidy is like you are borrowing to eat because you will never stop eating, but you will stop borrowing when people stop giving you money. So that is a fact. The solution has to be found to you. So mm -hmm. uh, asking Nigerians to... Uh, moderate their lives to restrict themselves to a certain lifestyle is also one of cultural orientation and the need for us to address. Uh, we are not a rich country and also we are not a poor country. We are not a rich country in the sense that our way of life as a nation does not reflect the economic reality of our country. Take for example in Abuja here, a rent cost as much as 15, 20, and 35 million naira. And we don't have any industry. We don't produce anything in Abuja other than simply the government is here and people can move around and loot and, and take contracts. So this is okay. it. We All right. Have, okay, yes, before I go further, I would urge our viewers, both incoming and already existing, please like and share and um, drop a comment for us in the comment section. Tap the subscribe button, tap the notification bell so you could get updates anytime we drop new contents. Please, these particular actions you do make YouTube make our videos go viral and make it go around the world for our own consumption and your own consumption too. Because we are here for you and you are here for us. Yes, I'm Senator Shea Usani is not wrong. Please, let us find a way to curb the issue of wealth subsidy. 
we have said over time that um, the government should provide palliatives or other incentives to the country people or to the citizens of Nigeria for a sort of soft landing because this time around we are suffering and um, Nigerians are also um, getting it hard by this um, hike in fuel pump price because um, we have not seen people who can actually come out and um, own up to the um, collection or to the um, possession of fuel subsidy money okay and this subsidy money has ranged into billions and trillions of naira and this cannot continue the government has done well by taking away the subsidy but please a sort of succor should be provided for nigerians to enhance a soft landing and a good welfare or a sort of a good well-being or a sort of standardized style of living because that is the right thing to do because we as a country in nigeria are more than that particular stage we are inhabitants who are over 200 million feed from hand to mouth that is that i hope you enjoyed our update keep it with us later for my next video and next content see you later bye